you're going to crush it as a home seller. It's just that simple. And with the inventory levels we have, it's not stopping over the next few months. There's nothing, nothing slowing down this market. It's really unlike anything I've ever seen before. Welcome everyone to another edition of the Richard Haynes Real Estate Show and Podcast. I'm your host, Richard Haynes of Manhattan Pacific Realty here in the South Bay of Los Angeles, California. Woo, it feels good to be back. Uh, I don't think I've recorded a podcast since September. We are now officially in December. It's December 2nd. Um, forgive me for a prolonged absence. This market has been truly incredible and kept us very, very busy over here. And so while I've wanted to shoot more YouTubes and podcasts, we've had to focus on serving our clients and, and all the things we have going on. But the great thing is, is during the holidays, we almost always typically slow down as do sellers and buyers. And so this month in December, I'm going to be bringing you a podcast each and every week because a two-month absence means two months of content that I want to get out to you, two months of information, two, much, two months of things going on with the market that we need to catch up on. So you guys are going to get back-to-back-to-back-to-back weeks here. Um, on the podcast, and hopefully I can give you guys a ton of info to get you set up well for 2022 and what we have for the real estate market then, what's going on now, what's happened the past couple months, and uh, we really dive into some good stuff. So for this week's podcast, I'm going to cover two topics, and then I'm going to set you up uh, for the coming weeks and what we'll have on the schedule. For this week's podcast, since I've been gone for so long, we haven't reviewed third quarter numbers throughout the South Bay. Again, I review the PV Peninsula, Hermosa, Redondo, and Manhattan Beach. And then the follow-up topic to that is, is going to be low, low, low inventory and how we're seeing that affect our buyers and our sellers. So those are going to be the, the, you know, the one or two topics. Maybe you can call that a third topic. Third quarter review in numbers. Uh, low, low inventory, and then number three, how it's affecting our clients, buyers, and sellers alike. And then really for the following podcast, I'll just give you a quick um, sneak peek. You know, I've gotten a lot more information on SB9 and SB10, that's Senate Bill 9 and Senate Bill 10, where it allows for the subdivision of lots um, and a little bit more density throughout the state. I'm going to go over those very, very important California affordability index numbers. Those were just released two weeks ago. We're going to cover that. Um, and then I'm going to go over the predictions I made at the beginning of this year and let you know what came true, what didn't, what was close. And then, of course, at the beginning of every year, I come up with my 2022 predictions. So I'm going to be sharing that, among other things, like fourth quarter numbers, etc. So we've got so much to cover over the next couple weeks. I hope you guys have some time off and can join me in this uh, hyper uh, hyper dump of podcasts on, uh, coming to you in December, and we'll have a little bit of fun with South Bay Real Estate. So nonetheless, let's get right into it. Third quarter numbers a little bit late to you. If you didn't read them on my blog, my weekly blog, I'm going to quickly go through numbers since they're a little bit more in the past and then jump into the low inventory numbers driving this market. So first and foremost, let's start with, uh, as I've written in my blog, the Tony Beach city of Manhattan Beach. Prices were up in the third quarter compared to last third quarter of, uh, of 2020. Prices were up 16.77% on a year over year basis in Manhattan Beach. Manhattan Beach's official median price is $3.125 million. That is a very big jump, you guys. The interesting thing about Manhattan Beach is sales were down. 
Well, normally sometimes that's a little bit of a warning sign of, hey, is, is the price growth not as strong or not as broad? That's not the case, which I'll get into with inventory levels. Um, but Manhattan Beach, man, big uh, teen jump uh, in the third quarter. Moving on to, to the Palos Verdes Peninsula, we've got four cities that we cover. PVE up very similar to Manhattan Beach, 138 Eight four percent so not quite as high, but still double digits, teens growth year over year. RPV is up a whopping 26% from the third quarter of last year. That's simply amazing. That's a jump of almost $350,000 in generally what's um, uh, held as the most affordable city uh, on the hill in Rancho Palos Verdes. Rolling Hills Estates, prices up almost 8%. Not a huge jump, but man, sales are down huge because there's just no inventory. Uh, when I get to that part of the show, your, your, your jaw is going to drop on the inventory within Rolling Hills Estates. And then behind the gates, Rolling Hills, prices are up 16.62%. Behind the gates, obviously had the single best run in the South Bay. Um, uh, since the pandemic started because it's big lots, gated city, quiet, um, and the single best performing market, and it has showing no signs of slowing down. Moving on to Hermosa Beach. Hermosa Beach uh, up 7.5%. Super, super respectable. And I always bring up Hermosa Beach just having respectable growth because the city seems to never blow it out of the water, but it never seems to really get hurt either during the pandemic when all the other cities were, were having problems. Hermosa Beach stayed steady, didn't go down really. And during this whole run up, it's had really good growth, but not the volatility that we've seen with other cities, just good, solid 7.5% growth for Hermosa pretty amazing. Um, and part of that is, is condos are coming back in Hermosa Beach. There's a lot of big condo complex buildings. So as the coronavirus fears have waned with those big buildings, there's been more condo sales. Those tend to be on the lower end of the, the spectrum. If I were to take out condo sales, Hermosa prices would be way, way higher. Uh, but condo sales are coming back in a big way. And then to wrap up third quarter results, uh, we'll talk Redondo Beach. Uh, the city as a whole up almost 21% year over year on prices. If you take South Redondo up 19%, if you take North Redondo up almost 23%. So pretty even with North Redondo being a little bit more affordable, having the bigger price surge, South Redondo still doing very, very well. You know, to note on the city as a whole and both South and North Redondo sales down in big ways. Uh, North Redondo down 10%, and then sales down in South Redondo, 16, almost 17%. And again, it's not that the strength isn't there. It's just this low, low inventory that we're really experiencing here in the South Bay. And I think that's a perfect segue um, to the second topic of low, low, low inventory. That's really the theme here. And uh, to kind of set up this low inventory talk, you know, when the coronavirus hit, people were afraid to buy, prices got hit, sales collapsed. And then as we kind of figured out that, hey, we've got to stay home, we've got to socially distance, um, work from home, home got more important, we worked from home, we played from home, we cooked from home, we raised kids from home, we, you know, had close family member in our inner pods uh, during the pandemic over at home. More and more important, that really drove the market in 2020, second half, and into 2021. What I'm finding is now is people who needed the office space or needed the bigger backyard or thought there was an opportunity to buy or wanted to sell and get out of California and move to the mountains or to the desert or to the Midwest or to Florida, a lot of that has been done. But most people who are now owners or haven't made a move just go, I'm happy where I'm at. I don't want to sell. And if I did want to sell, how the heck am I ever going to buy anything? And so, and then buyers have continued to show up in droves. Really, in my opinion, 
based on millennials being greater than 50% of this buying cohort these days, they're all starting to finally form families later in life. They're becoming of age. Um, there's more reti- early retirees because of the, the, the pandemic. Millennials are starting to get promoted, make more money. That buying demand hasn't slowed down, but inventory as kind of a perfect cocktail has collapsed at least in our South Bay markets. If you read a national report, some people say, hey, inventory is starting to climb. We're starting to level off. We're not seeing as many multiple you know, offer um, scenarios on listings. Here we have really no listings. And here we still have tons of buyer demand. Um, and maybe that's because there's no more land to build in the South Bay, or it's really desirable here, or there's more white collar workers who can work from home and are getting raises or their companies are doing better, but there is no inventory and the buyer demand has not slowed down. So let's talk about inventory. To put it to you in a numbers perspective, um, Manhattan Beach uh, at the end of October, and so I'm using older numbers. I didn't pull the November numbers because we just closed out November's, but I did a blog post on this. At the end of October, Manhattan Beach had 32 active listings. Its low in 2014 was at 27. That was an incredible time in Manhattan Beach back in 2014. Only 27 active listings. The market was surging. We're only five listings away from that in Manhattan Beach. And I expect it to get worse because we're going to head into the holidays and there's going to be no sellers. So Manhattan Beach is almost at historical all-time lows on inventory, but the demand is there and probably hasn't been as big uh, at at any point ever. When you look at the Palos Verdes Peninsula, if you look at Palos Verdes Estates, the all-time low of inventory, at least in the data on the MLS, was 2013 where there were 29 active listings at the end of this year of uh, of this year's October there were 24 so we were five listings lower than the all-time low so we are at all-time lows in PVE by 20 percent and it's really only gotten worse from what I've seen today in December Uh, Rancho Palos Verdes, the all-time low, was hit in 2021 already at 64 listings. End of October, we hit 52 listings, so it dropped another dozen homes. And previously, if you take out 2021, the all-time low for Rancho Palos Verdes was 94 listings. End of October, we had 52. So the all-time low was cut in half in Rancho Palos Verdes. We're normally used to 100, 125, 150 listings in Rancho Palos Verdes, we only have 52 today. That's unbelievable, you guys. And part of the reason why you heard in the last segment, RPV is up 26% in price year over year in the third quarter. Another astonishing number, Rolling Hills Estates, City of Rolling Hills Estates, all-time low with seven active listings. At the end of October, all-time low, seven active listings. It's matched the all-time low. Normally, there are way more listings in Rolling Hills Estates. It's a big market. To only have seven homes is astonishing. And we had a huge new development in Rolling Hills Country Club that if there was no coronavirus pandemic and we stayed the same, that was going to take years and years to sell through the inventory. After 18 months of the pandemic, Rolling Hills Country Club is sold out. And we're talking about five and six million dollar homes. Unreal in terms of price increase there and that that's sold out. And with Rolling Hills Country Club selling out and everyone wanting to stay in their existing homes in Rolling Hills Estates, we officially have like no inventory there. It's unreal. And then behind the gates, essentially it's a very small city with not a huge amount of homes. All time low is at six homes. We're at eight homes. Rolling Hills behind the gates can be at very, very low inventory or very high inventory in good times and bad times. There's not much to take away from that, but what there is to take away from that is prices are roaring. They're at all-time highs. It's the best-performing market since coronavirus hit, and there's no inventory, and people are paying up for Rolling Hills behind the gates. To Hermosa Beach inventory, all-time low in Hermosa Beach in 2014 was 27 homes at the end of october this year there were only 20
four homes on the market. So we hit an all-time low for inventory in Hermosa Beach. Are you hearing this recurring theme? So Hermosa has never had lower inventory, much like a lot of our other uh, cities that we just talked about. And it's getting lower, you guys. It's unbelievable. Redondo Beach, all-time low. Again, 2014, all-time low in South Redondo was 27 homes. End of October, 24 homes. So three homes lower than the all-time low. Um, North Redondo, it's even worse. All-time low was actually made in 2020 during the coronavirus. All-time low, 42 homes. End of October, 21 homes. It's been cut in half. The all-time low was beaten by 50% just at the end of October. And before coronavirus hit, the all-time low had been much higher. We're used to significantly more inventory, two times, three times, four times more inventory in North Redondo is what we're normally used to. We are at insanely low inventories for Redondo Beach. So let's look at this. Manhattan Beach almost at an all-time low. Essentially, the Palos Verdes Hill at all-time lows. Every city. Hermosa Beach at an all-time low. South Redondo at an all-time low. North Redondo at crazy all-time lows. So everyone's at all-time lows for inventory except for Manhattan Beach, which is almost there. There is no inventory. There is no supply. I don't care if interest rates tick up a little bit. I don't care if a few buyers get discouraged there are no homes for sale. So when something does come for sale and the buyers that are out there desperate for homes, they're gone. There were so few listings that came out before Thanksgiving. I told clients, hey, maybe people didn't want to list the weekend before Thanksgiving. If they didn't sell, they didn't want to roll into Thanksgiving. Some people are preparing their homes for the holidays. No listings. We're not going to get any listings over Thanksgiving. We didn't get any listings. My hope was this first week of December, we'd see kind of a catch up. I'll tell you what, guys, between Manhattan and PV, I've seen like 15 new listings. There's been a couple more since the end of Thanksgiving, but those went right away or they were priced to sell over Thanksgiving weekend and everyone was out of town. Kind of a funky time to list. I, I don't know if I agree with the listing agents or seller strategies there, but there's only been another 15 homes to come out after Thanksgiving with the two-week run-up to Thanksgiving giving us no listings, no listings coming out during the holiday. It's insanity. It's absolute insanity for how low inventory is. And so we're working with buyers right now where in normal markets, you study the market, you see a lot of homes, you be patient, you write an offer, you get the house. Or maybe some people write two, three, maybe four offers because they're writing on the most competitive or nicest stuff. And then they get it. We have clients who are writing six to 10 offers. We had clients that wrote 13 offers this year before finally getting something. It's insanity. And as long as this inventory is at all-time lows, and essentially the millennial generation is larger than the baby boom generation, and they are forming families, and they want homes, and South Bay workers are doing incredibly well just because they're typically white-collar workers doing very well in tech or industries that weren't affected by the coronavirus uh, uh, pandemic. We have this perfect cocktail for an incredibly strong market that shows no signs of slowing down. It's simply amazing. So if you're a buyer, you guys, there's low inventory. You've got to be patient when the right one comes. You have to come in strong above comps, and you have to be willing, even if you overpay the comps, that you're probably going to lose it, and you've got to have thick skin and keep continuing. If you're a seller, you've got to... Do one thing only, and that is not overprice your property, and then set up the property for success. Clean it out. Paint it. Stage it. Get out of there. Painting and staging is the best thing ever, and don't overprice it. Underprice it, put it at market, and then put it out at a time where people are looking. Don't list on Thanksgiving or on Christmas or on New Year's. List at a good time when people are out looking, set the property up for success, price it appropriately. You're gonna get multiple offers. You're gonna set the new comp. You're gonna have an easy transaction. You're gonna dictate terms. And as long as you know where you're going next, 
where you've already got another home secured elsewhere or you're going to rent or you're going to travel the world for a year or whatever you're going to do, you're going to crush it as a home seller. It's just that simple. And with the inventory levels we have, it's not stopping over the next few months, at least through the first quarter of this year. So buyers, you got to have thick skin. Sellers, you're living the dream. And I'll keep reporting back to you guys on when this inventory uh, uh, squeeze loosens up. Because if it doesn't, we're just going to see the market going up and up and up unless interest rates go up by a percent in a month or something. But outside of that, there's nothing, nothing slowing down this market. It's really unlike anything I've ever seen before. So there you guys have it, a, a little dose of reality just to show you how crazy it is out there. Again, upcoming topics. We're going to be really juicy this uh, this month of December with topics. We're going to get back to the CAR affordability numbers, which is such a key indicator of where the market is going. We're going to cover SB9 and SB10, subdividing lots, and how that will affect the South Bay market. We're going to go over my 2021 predictions and how those panned out. And we're going to also talk about the hottest markets of 2021. Sure, every market's been been hot, but what was the best perform what were the best performing markets of the year? What were the worst performing markets of the year? That's always valuable to know. And then of course, as we roll out of December into January, I'm going to be having my predictions for the real estate market and the South Bay of 2022. So we've got some really fun podcasts coming up for you. Thanks for understanding the the delay and the the slowdown with the podcasts. We're going to bring some great stuff in the coming weeks. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon and have a great week. Talk to you later.